Hey, what a great time to be alive. You want to make a difference. You want to be the best. You want to be an influencer. You want to be someone who will make a big difference in the world. And it doesn't matter whether you're running an enterprise, whether you are a private business person or you're working for an, uh, an institution or you're working for an organization or you are even working for yourself. The most important thing is that you are basically going to be learning a few secrets on how you can actually um, evolve in trying times. For now, we've been battling with the, the consequences of globalization, especially how it impacts on the people of Nigeria and those, even those in our local system. The reality right now is that globally, distance is now dead. The world is now a global village. The stuff going on around the world has impacted this country hugely. The economic decline that is happening everywhere in the world, Nigeria is now not left out specifically. And you know, before COVID, Nigeria was already struggling. <laughs> you know, a lot of people in Nigeria were already finding it difficult to even live life in a way that is really great. So people are struggling to survive. People are trying to even make a living. And so, but the consequences of, of globalization here definitely is that you are no longer competing amongst yourselves. You're no longer competing. You're no longer a local champion in that sense. You are competing with the very best in the world. You are competing with your kind of person, doing the kind of work that you're doing in India, in Singapore, in Brazil, and in other places, a lot of them are facing a lot of challenges in order to keep up that your own is even worse here in Nigeria. So what it means is that if you have to totally evolve, if you have to totally become relevant, overcome these challenges, there is supposed to be a particular kind of mindset, a particular kind of attitude, a particular kind of of behavior standards that you must have to adopt if you have to be able to survive the difficult times then it means that you have to specifically tell yourself that you must do something that is different you must think through something that is different you must be different yourself you must grow as an individual yourself you must become a voice yourself you must become that voice that consistently speak to yourself that first thing first you have to become an outstanding leader first before you will be able to overcome the challenges that come as a result of the challenges of doing business in Nigeria as a result of the quality of leadership that we have seen at the political level challenges in terms of you know even amongst ourselves as individuals some of us constitute major challenges for other people to be able to make progress and so sometimes you're dealing with the fact that a lot of people within your space do not even believe in you so at the end of the day there are several factors that can enable you continue to be where you are for now as a leadership coach my experience is quite interesting. I had an opportunity to have started leadership development at the age of 19. By the way, my parents had nine of us. And I was, you know, the one of the, those who my parents had that decided to do everything I could to succeed, to become somebody. My father died when I was in class three. Of course, it's been a challenging journey so far. But one of the things that I have learned, the principles that I've learned that has helped me at every difficult time, at every challenging time, that has helped me to become where, who I am today and has helped me to become the type of leader that I am today 
These are some of the secrets I'd like to share with you from a global perspective. The truth of the matter is that if you choose to be that leader that will make a difference, you must make certain decisions. If you want to begin to trend positively, even in challenging times, you continue to be the subject of discussion, you continue to be relevant within your system, you must, as a matter of necessity, become first before you begin to do stuff. Because you, before you begin to do great things, before you begin to try to do that business, before you try to begin to do whatever I want to do, the first thing you need to do is to first of all become. You have to first of all become great first. You have to first of all become that leader first. You have to first of all become. And in the process of becoming, I'd like to share with you, first thing first, three concepts that I think helps you in the process of becoming. It doesn't matter how far you are, what job you are doing right now. It doesn't matter the condition in which you are even doing those jobs. The critical thing that matters today is the fact that there are three things that are key to enable you in the process of becoming. First thing first is that you have to discover self. As simple as that is, purpose is a driver. The discovery of purpose will drive you like never before, will stretch you. When you discover purpose, what usually happens literally is that you begin to build vision around your purpose, around the things that you have discovered that you want to do per time. Some people are even working for big organizations and then they suddenly discover themselves. When the discovery is made from a perspective of the fact that you have now discovered originally what you are born to do, what gives you energy, what drives you, what you can find your vision from. Because if a man does not have a purpose waking up, sleeping becomes interesting. When you find purpose as an individual, it doesn't matter the circumstances or the obstacles on the way. When somebody has a vision of where he's going to as a result of self-discovery, what happens is that that individual begins the pursuit journey. A, amongst communities of the world, it's called the race of nations. When nations have found themselves and they're beginning to do everything in their power to push in order to first of all become great as a country. First thing first you need to do is to start the process of finding yourself. When you find yourself, when you are, become self-aware, when you become knowledgeable about who you are as an individual, who you want to become, all of that, then what happens is that the next level of personal development will now start. Because you cannot actually overcome systems, overcome the challenges of the systems, overcome the challenges that you face in this country until you are being able to have a clear picture of who you are and exactly where you are going to. For you to be able to understand that, the next thing that is critical is that you begin to self-develop. Self-development becomes critical. Self-development becomes fantastic. That's where you begin to develop what we call mind leadership. Mind leadership literally is the first point of call when you have discovered self. You begin to self-regulate. What it means to be self-regulate is that you begin to create centers of control around you as a person, around your mind. It never means that you begin to set up your mind in terms of structure around your mind such that it is not every thought that is permitted to actually grow seed in your mind. What it means is that you protect your mind from external threat. What it really means is that, so, so mind leadership is the ability to continue to plant positive emotions, continue to plant joy, happiness, those things that can make your mind filled with creating a right environment for you to be able to think properly, for you to be able to set goals, 
for you to be able to create priority, for you to be able to set boundaries, for you to be able to say to yourself that, you know what, despite the challenges that I see around me, I will pull through this. So self-talk, you create a system that you self-talk to yourself. First thing first is that your mind is built like a rock. You understand exactly the challenges that you are facing and then you are able to assemble those thoughts in your mind that will become enablers for you. The thoughts that will give you confidence. The thoughts that will be able to reinvent your person. The thoughts that will be able to reassure you that you see the challenges before you that you overcome those challenges. Listen, nobody has become great in life without first of all coming to the point of I will become great. So it means the person starts thinking about it. The person starts thinking about greatness. The person starts living greatness. The person starts exercising that greatness power within the system that I become great. Everyone who has become outstanding, first of all, they became great in their minds first. They envisioned the greatness in their mind first. They lived it in their mind first. They lived out greatness in their mind first. Those people had envisioned themselves, you know, visualizing. They visualized their success already. They visualized themselves overcoming the challenges. So it's something that you have to develop. Mind leadership critical. Once you're able to develop yourself in that realm, where you have control of your mind, not everything comes to your mind. You have overcome fear, on fear of the unknown. You have, you have overcome anxiety. You have overcome all those little, little challenges that can actually keep you in a place of perpetual fear. Imagine even having the capacity to overcome the effect of small talk, of gossips. Imagine having that mindset that is now ready to go. So that's personal mind leadership. The next thing that in the journey of personal development is self-leadership. So I haven't gone through your mind leadership, then living it out right now, it requires self-leadership to begin to live it out. When you begin to live it out as an individual with the strong capacity to lead and make a difference, so you start, set standard for yourself. Self-leadership begins means that you are now the CEO of your life, which means that it is now that you begin to begin to create what matters to you. What are your core values? What are your core values? Once your core values are in place, you know, in my journey to succeed, there are things that I will not do. There are things that are a yes, yes. There are boundaries that I have to set. What are the core values? So some people will say, my core value is I'm a perpetual learner. Courage is a core value. By the time you choose your core values, what it means is that you have been able to set your life on the path of growth. So you have to develop your character. You have to develop your ability to uh, rebounce when you fail. You know, that's a skill. That's an attitude. When you fail, what do you do? You come back to the to the thinking room and rethink yourself up again. Imagine if you begin to be that type of leader, you begin to generate, grow how you deal with challenges, you begin to deepen on how you deal with difficult people, on how you relate with familiar people, on how you deal with you know people who do not even like you and things like that, and how to be able to you know build a support system around you. Those things are gotten at the level of personal development. At the level of personal development is when you become a perpetual learner for life, where you begin to actually grow yourself to say, you know what, I will read social number of books per time. I will meet social number of people. I will attend social number of conferences in a year. By the time you begin to create those type of systems around you, what it means is that you have developed yourself, developed yourself to become such a force to reckon with. And then you move to the next level, which is self-mastery. As you begin to do stuff, because now you have joined the process of becoming, and then you start practicing those things. As you begin to practice those things, what happens is that after a while, you become a master in doing great things. So you gain self-mastery. It is at a level of self-mastery 
that you develop so much capacity to be able to reinvent yourself consistently and continue to overcome the various challenges that fit into the environment. So which means you have vowed to yourself that whenever you fail, the failure itself becomes a learning point. Whenever you win, the winning itself becomes a learning point. You see, you grow at every point in time. You lose, you grow. You win, you grow. That's a system that is very amazing. I have seen people that have become outstanding because of the fact that they have been able to um, allow themselves not to fail in difficult times. I have always, since I started, this is my 26 years of pushing leadership development in this country. I remember when I woke up to some institutions and I'll sell my idea to them in the early days of Gottney. And when I share my ideas to them, a lot of people say, this idea is not working. We don't know what this idea is about. Leadership is nothing. We don't understand it. And a lot of people will expect me at that time to go back and begin to ask myself, why am I doing what I'm doing? I remember a particular uncle of mine who looked at me in the face and said to me that this is your idea, leadership development. Many years ago, what well, he didn't understand it. What, what does this mean? What is this? My friend, go and get a job. That this thing will not put food on your table. I mean, imagine somebody who loved me. It was a loved one who could talk to me that way. But guess what? I went back to my drawing board and I began to plan. And I began to replan. I began to be consistent with my idea. I began to grow my idea. And the next thing, I was invited on Patito's gang. I was among the youngest members of Patito's gang. And my, my, that my first cousin saw me on television. He was a high person at, in the military at that point in time. I mean, he was in the Navy. And when he saw me on, te on television discussing ideas of leadership development, he was so thrilled. He was so amazed that he, he reached out to me to say, what? What? Which means, first thing first, nobody is going to buy into your idea when you have not been able to believe in yourself so much and keep that idea. First thing first, they will reject your idea. That's the first thing first. That's the difficult thing you, you, you have to experience. Secondly, when you stay on it, keep at it, stay at it, keep at it, when that happens, the next thing is that they will begin to um, actually come to you to say, ah, let's see whether this idea will die. But you stay at it, keep at it. After a while, they begin to listen to you. And when they begin to listen to you, you make sense. The next thing is that that person who rejected the idea will be able to come back to you to say, I want us to work together. That was my case. I wrote a book on leadership, Footprints, Leading Beyond Today. And he read that book. And he said to me, he's so proud to have me as a, a, a cousin. Up to today, he's so proud of me. And because today, the leadership thing I'm talking to you about has not only put food on my table, but has helped me to raise other leaders in this country. Thousands of leaders across Nigeria and Africa and around the world, you know, who believe in what I'm doing, are already making progress with the ideas that I'm pushing across. And today, by the special grace of God, I'm comfortable making a difference and happy about it. So what it means is that it doesn't matter what you're going through. You must first of all understand that for you, for you to become somebody in this life, that is your decision, not the decision of any other person else. There's a God factor to all of this, but guess what? You have to continually evolve, continually reinvent yourself. And you can't do that until you understand the secret behind the learning system, which means if you want to be able to, you know, be intelligent enough, you have the executive intelligence, have the emotional intelligence to be able to survive in difficult times, then you will be able to learn how to survive in difficult times. You have to research it. You have to find how to survive in difficult times. And one of the major ways is to reinvent yourself through learning. So on a daily basis, you are ahead of your generation on the particular industry where you are playing, what you want to be able to do is to ensure that at every point in time, whatsoever is the current trend in that industry where you are playing in, it must be on your fingertips. 
you cannot continue to evolve outside self-reinvention and it takes a lot of knowledge for you to be able to succeed in times like this because we're at the information age the person with the information who can utilize that information effectively will go ahead trust me it's no longer going to be it's no longer a physical battle it's a battle of that ends up in the marketplace that battle i'm talking to you about it's about the quality of the value that you create when you are able to gather enough data gather enough information and you trade with that information invest in that information think through with that information play with that information and at the end of the day it gives you either a product or a service or enhances an already existing service or a product what that happens is that it is when you are going to the marketplace that you will meet, witness a lot of obstacles within the marketplace. But trust me, if you can continue to reinvent on that idea, if you can continue to reinvent yourself, if you can continue to actually focus on, on that place that you are going to, and what happens is that when you fall in the process, you rise up, study why you have failed, and reinvent yourself again, and push. That is the battle I'm talking to you about. And at the end of the day, because when you succeed and get into the marketplace and that idea means something to you, what it means is that there's an idea that you have knocked out of the marketplace in order to be able to give yourself a place. Somebody said somewhere, a person was saying, if, some, if I get a place, I will change the world. Give me a place and I will change the world. Give me a place to stand and I will change the world. <laughs> and one great man laughed and laughed he said nobody's going to give you a place to stand you got to take a place by yourself all on fire for good that's exactly what I'm talking to you about in difficult times men who have been able to make progress and had you know come up with ideas that are taking them out of poverty to wealth who simply believed in themselves they believed in themselves they worked hard to discover themselves and they began the process of self-development and then they move into self-mastery and at the level of self-mastery they did not sit down they continue to create a learning system they continue to grow in knowledge because leadership flows to the one who knows and at the end of the day they are able to reinvent themselves and then they're able to get ahead to get ahead is a lot of work you cannot be a leader until you have mastered the other element of getting ahead which is emotional intelligence and emotional intelligence is critical it's fantastic because show me somebody who has been able to make a lot of progress and i'll show you somebody who has developed the sound principles of knowing how to work with different human beings difficult human beings all types of human beings conrad hilton the founder of Transcop Hilton Group said clearly, very powerfully, he said he is ready to pay any amount of money, any amount of money to someone who has the capacity and the ability to work with people in difficult times. The quality of people you have in your space, you have in your system can help you get out of the state that you are in today. There's nothing that you need that is not in somebody's hand. There's nothing that you need today that somebody does not own, own it. There's nothing that you need today that you cannot find. You, it is with somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody. And at the end of the day, what is the quality of people in your space? That is why you deliberately need to network yourself to very quality people in preparing yourself for the bad days ahead. When the days are bad, literally, um, people are playing with ideas. But guess what? When you invest in human beings, and human beings are quality human beings, what it means is that one person alone can help you come out of your state where you are right now. And at the end of the day, you can bring enough value. Even when you present your ideas in the marketplace, it will require a human being to be able to certify whether the idea is needed for now or is needed tomorrow. You see what I'm talking to you about? So what it means is that you can become everything that you want to become. You can step out and make the kind of difference that you want to make. Great people of Crossover States, great people of Nigeria. My thoughts is that in difficult times, the battles are fought in the mind. 
The battles are fought in the mind. Once you get your mind right and you protect your mind and then you begin to go into self-leadership and then begin to build and discover yourself in the real way that you need to, to, to do so and you continue to grow and grow and grow in self-revention and begin to play with a courageous mindset, trust me, you can become anything that you want to be. Uh, it was Dr. Miles Monroe who said something very powerful. He said leadership is the ability to motivate, inspire, drive a group of people towards a particular direction via inspiration, not intimidation or manipulation. If you get that, that, intro, that in, 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 introduction alone, this, this leadership introduction alone or definition, you know, literally is talking to you about the fact that for anything to happen, the leader has to make it happen. Somebody will have to initiate something. What are you initiating now? What are you initiating? What idea are you bringing to the marketplace? Wait. The second thing is that there must be a vision. What is your vision for now? What is it that is really, really inspiring you? What do you have in mind? That if you have it today, you can really go far. The next thing is that you need followers, people who can believe in your dream and help your dream to become. So what it means is that you cannot become great by yourself. You need human beings that will have to buy those ideas and run with you in the first place. But you know what? It's, to do that requires influence. And how do you generate influence uh, you know, as a person? It means that you have to be emotionally smart. You have to be emotionally smart and you now begin to get to a point where what you want to do, literally, is to begin to create value wherever you find yourself in. Touch people's lives in small matters. When you begin to create value, let people matter to you. People matter a lot. In fact, one great man said that we are blind in this world until we know that nothing is worth the making if it does not make the man. Why build the cities glorious? Why men on builded go? You're, you have to start placing value on human lives, on human beings. Human beings matter. And if you find them in your space and you begin to influence them, impact them, what it means is that you have developed enough influence that can help you become the best that you can really be. And the next thing is that you have to sacrifice your way to being on the top. I look forward to speaking to you again. Like, comment, and subscribe to watch more videos on leadership by Dr. Linus Okorie.